Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Love Fruit Podcast. And today we have a special guest, and that is Jane Sinclair. And Jane lives in Wales. She's a professional violinist who plays in an orchestra. We'll find out a bit more about that. And Jane has also been a long time attendee of the UK Fruit Fest. She was actually at the very first festival and has been to almost all of them ever since. And she also gave her first talk at the festival last year. Uh, Jane is also an EFT practitioner, emotional freedom technique. And uh, we'll, you'll find out a bit more about that as well. And of course, uh, a Rob Egan, Rob Egan enthusiast. And Jane, hello. Is there anything else you want to ask to add on to your introduction? No, I think that's covered it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I met you at the UK Fruit Fest 2014, I believe. But what was your story before that? Were you, were you brought up in a conventional diet or a vegan diet or how did it all start for you? Okay, um, I was brought up in a conventional diet um, and when I got supposed to my teenage years I started to feel a bit sort of yuck when things were put on my plate but I didn't I didn't moan about it and then I was about 20 I think and I went on holiday to Portugal and asked for the the grilled fish these little tiny fish and I watched him go it was a fishing village and I watched him go to the sea and get his net and pull it up and there were these wriggling fish and then he sort of threw them onto this, this this barbecue thing and then they were on my plate and I just looked at them and I, I said to the, the bloke I was with at the time I can't eat this and I said I'm never eating meat or fish again oh my god um and that was it from that moment I never, I never ate meat or fish. And I remember going home to my mum and telling her this. And she said, well, start tomorrow because I've done chicken. And I said, no, <laughs> I don't want to start tomorrow. I'm starting from now. So um, that was about 40 years ago. And, um, and then I didn't think about going vegan. It never crossed my mind, really. But when I was about 33 or four, I was in a charity bookshop. And uh, I was just looking and this book leapt le out to me and it was called Raw Energy by Leslie Kenton. I thought, oh, I need some of that. Um, and I read it and I was so taken by it. And I was married at the time to a different person and he was a big meat eater. We were both drinkers, we both smoked. But I thought, well, I'm gonna give this a go and just see how I feel. So I did it for two weeks and I had so much energy. Um, and I thought, God, this is amazing, but I, I couldn't keep it going. It didn't fit with my lifestyle at all. Mm -hmm. So I put the book away and I went back to my vegetarian diet until I got to 50, which was 13 years ago, and I hit the menopause and I was having these horrible flushes and was taking these herbal pills, which were really expensive, which sort of helped. And then I thought, well, I remember that diet I did all those years ago. Um, so I looked into it and actually Bill, who I'm now married to, was um, sitting on a coach. We were on the way in the orchestra to a, um, an outside broadcast and he was reading this book and I was sitting behind him and, and I said, what are you reading? And he said, oh, it's brilliant. And he showed me the front cover and it was 801010. So he said, oh, do you want to borrow it? And he never got it back for the rest of the journey. I kept saying, oh, do you want this back? No, no, hang on to it. Because it's so easy to read, isn't it? It's all these little paragraphs. And you think, oh, I'll just read this one and I'll just read that one. Um, and I got home and the next day I ordered my own copy. And that was it. I went raw vegan. I got rid of the hot flushes. Oh, wow. Um, had masses amount of energy. And actually, I, I tuned into your Fruity Friday um the last one <clears throat> and I was driving home from work and you were talking about the energy that you get from the raw diet and how it changes over time and I thought that's really interesting because that's been something I've been thinking about recently that where was that absolute I was like a Duracell bunny you know I had so much energy I didn't know what to do with it all and whilst I'm I still have energy it's not the same as it was in that initial so whether your your brain gets used to that 
-hmm. and you don't realize that you've got more energy than than most people sitting around you I don't know but uh, I thought that was interesting on Friday when I when I heard you saying that yeah I kind of I've got this I mean these are all just little ideas you have in your own mind and ways that you perceive things because I I can't really prove it but I, I, I do wonder if for some people the way I put it I think is that almost our body overcompensates with yeah. the amount of energy it produces because of our the lifestyle it's had so far. So when you take that away, all of a sudden you're still kind of overcompensating for a while. Yeah. But, but you've got much yeah. less stress on your body. So there's a, a perception of for a period of time, like as you're saying, like a, a tremendous boost in energy, and then that mm-hmm. calms down to more normal. Yeah. Um, but I suppose normal is different. I mean, I yeah. I, I can remember being in, in the orchestra, you know, and, and it, it gets to after lunch um, rehearsal. And I always had a cheese sandwich. Every lunchtime mm-hmm. I had a cheese sandwich. I'd get to about three o'clock, so an hour after the rehearsal started. And all I wanted to do was just lie on the floor and go to sleep. It was so bad, this afternoon slump, you know, and I put it down to my age. But I wasn't that, I mean, I was still in my 40s. Um, or that I was bored, there was something, I never put it down to diet because I didn't know about diet and, and what it could do. But, um, oh God, to be free of that is amazing. So whilst I don't have the same, and also I've got to think when well, I'm 63 this year, but I'm still, you know, I meditate, I do my yoga, um, I do lots of walking. So it's not like I've, and I certainly don't use my age as a, yeah. oh, well, that's because I'm, but I don't do that at all. I don't even know why I said that really. But um, but the fact is that I suppose maybe your energy levels will go down as you get older, but they're, they're certainly not slow down. It's just the, this initial rush. So anyway, I went on to the raw vegan diet and um, I was a size 12. I went down to a size eight within two or three weeks. I mean, the weight just fell off me. <laughs> so that, of course, all my friends are, oh, I'm worried about you. You know, what are you doing? And as you're often telling people, Ronnie, I wasn't eating enough. You know, oh. I'd have a couple of apples at lunchtime and then wonder why I was absolutely ravenous. Um, and that's why I lost loads of weight. Nearly lose all the water as well initially. But it did, I mean, I went down to seven stone 12 and I'm now I'm about eight and a half stone. Mm-hmm. And at the time it, it leveled off, but I mean, I was really, really skinny. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, I had an, an amazing amount of energy for somebody that was very skinny, but and nobody really understood. They used to laugh at me because I'd arrive at work. Once I realised, oh, you've got to eat more than this. And in fact, the first time I realised that was the first UK fruit festival. And I was astonished. <laughs> you know, came in for breakfast and people's plates uh, were <laughs> going to eat all that. And there was a lady a few years back. She was an older lady. And actually, it was only a couple of years ago because Bill was there. And she had two plates and they were absolutely heaving with food. I mean, by then I knew you had to eat a lot, but I mean, I'd never eat yeah. what she was eating. But um, but it's so true. I mean, I think that's why people fall off because they just don't don't eat enough. Yeah, I think I think it leads to a lot of a lot of symptoms that mm. aren't sim- that they they misperceive as maybe symptoms of something being wrong with the diet. Um, yeah. And it really does feel like that when you when you, yeah. when you do feel like that. Yeah. Uh, it really feels like something's missing, and it's not very clear that you're hungry. That's the strange thing. It's no. not like it's not like you go, "Well, I'm I'm really hungry." That's the problem. It's very yeah. it's a very weird thing. Yeah. But, uh, how did you actually find out about the first uh, fruit festival? Um, do you remember mm-hmm. Helen? Helen Watkins? Oh yeah, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Well. I mean, it's funny, isn't it? This the way the, the universe works. But we were doing a Cardiff Singer of the World, which happens every other year. And Helen used to work um, as a freelancer librarian for the Opera Orchestra. And we used to, mine, which is the BBC National Orchestra of Wales, little plug there, um, and the Opera Orchestra do it every other night. So we do it one night, they do it the next. And a friend of mine said, we were just passing backstage in St David's Hall and Helen was in this cubby hole and, and my friend said oh there's somebody you've got to meet 
and I went in. She, this is Helen Jane. Oh, hello. And, she, and I remember looking and she had all these bottles in front of her full of this green <laughs> guns and she just got smoothies. She just, she just made enough smoothies to keep her going for the day, you know. Right. Um, and so she said, oh, we, oh, you eat raw, you know, um, how do you, what do you do? You know, are you high fat? And I said, oh, I try and follow 80, 10 to 10. And she said, oh yeah, me too. And then we, she told me about the festival and I, I oh, came wow. and yeah. it was. Yeah, they moved to Australia, I think. Yeah, they're in Brisbane. Yeah, yeah. so we're still in touch. Amazing. But she, <laughs> she came to stay with me once for about three weeks. I don't, I think she must've gone to bed, but apart from being in bed, she just stood in my kitchen uh, making things. And she taught me so much in those <laughs> three weeks <laughs> than on a pancakes and, you know. Yeah, Helen was uh, a really huge part of the first festival. Like mm. she, we had like 10 people and I think Helen did like 80% of the work or yeah, or I, me and her Good, I can imagine. of the work. She, she yeah. did a lot. Um, so she's very great, and uh, but she's the she's the kind of person that is, and I stayed with her as well a few times um, when we were trying to find places for the festival and stuff. Her and her husband, and I yeah. also was at a, a festival in Slovenia and stayed in the room with them. And, All right. Uh, and I just remember, like, they're the kind of people that no one knows about them. They don't put, they don't want to be online and all that stuff. But they're an amazing example to other people. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. And I remember they were like, they were so fit. They were they were running. Yeah. They had uh, they were doing high intensity work. High intensity. And yeah. Stuff. And they've now had a baby who's oh great nearly, nearly three. So, and he looks he looks like I don't know how to say it without using the wrong a naughty word, but you know a small little rugby. His <laughs> muscles. I mean, and and all he's been brought up on. It's sort of breast milk and fruit, you know. Amazing. And Amazing. that's it. And he loves it. Absolutely loves it. So and I think Anne Osborne lives quite close to them. So she's been very helpful. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So um yeah. what what have been like how well, how did you find the kind of transition into that kind of diet? Like um did that did you do it over a long period of time? Have you did you make sudden changes? Are you still making changes? Like what, what's been um, your journey with no, it? No, the way I do things, I don't do things over a period of time. I just do them. Um, I gave up smoking the same way. I did try to cut those down actually, and that doesn't work at all. So right. that was an over, I, I'm not gonna smoke anymore. Um, I did the same with, I gave up drinking, it'll be three years in May, and that was the same, I'm not gonna drink anymore. Um, not, I mean, I wasn't an alcoholic, but oh, my dog's going to start barking now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. What do you mean, wolf? Um, <laughs> so yeah, when I decided, right, that's what I'm going to do. I just, I just did it, and you know, didn't. I mean, I know some people say, oh, you want to transition carefully, and you know, let your body get used to it. Well, I didn't. I mean, I just thought one day it's having all this toxic crap if I'm allowed to say that and the next day it's going to have have good stuff and and I think I was healthy and and I wasn't massively overweight so it wasn't like toxins were suddenly going to come into all my organs I didn't feel like that it felt absolutely brilliant so I just I just plowed straight into it yeah I'm not a big fan of that idea that people if they do it too quickly they're gonna, they're gonna no their no. body their body's gonna just put toxins into the body. Yeah, like exactly. it doesn't make it doesn't make a great deal of sense that the body's just gonna do crazy like no, no. Un bad things like that. Um yeah and uh what so what is what would be your lifestyle like now? I, I know that you've got a lot of interesting recipes as well that you do but um, yeah. so you've got a slightly different approach maybe to a lot of people but what's um, yeah. the typical typical kind of day or or uh, okay. if, you, if you've got kind of control in what you're doing and stuff like mm. what, what what do you like um, to do i um only have one sort of fruit for breakfast um i don't tend to eat an awful lot of, at breakfast um so i might like to have three apples 
And then at lunchtime, I'll do the same. I'll have one type of fruit. So today I've had four massive oranges. Um, and then about five o'clock, I'll probably have another couple of bits of fruit. But then it'll be um, a prepared. I have got different recipes. I make a moussaka I was telling you about online um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, what, although I, it sounds like it's gourmet and it's certainly fancy, um, I don't use oils, I don't use salt. Um, so it's, it's things like, and I use sprouted chickpeas mm -hmm. for that. And I know that's not an ideal food, but it, all it is, is is soaked aubergine slices, um, sprouted chickpeas, a tomato sauce, and then a, a cheese topic so that one's a bit fatty but I, tr I try to sort of push the cheese sauce over to Bill's half of it so that I don't have too much <laughs> um and I actually did a water fast uh I've done I've done a couple of just small ones right um and before Robert Lockhart died I had done a couple of 40 hour dry fast but that completely thought I'm not doing that again um <laughs> And it does, when I think about doing that to your body, depriving it of absolutely everything, I think, well, how is it supposed to function? You know, it, it needs hydrating. So I'm not a big fan. I know I have a friend at work who thinks that, the, you know, dry fasting is the answer to everything. And, oh, really? Uh, yeah. But I mean... It's weird. There seems that. to be like a lot of, a lot of people into raw veganism in the, in the orchestra no, scene. No, not at reason. all. No. In fact, this... <laughs> This girl was the only person, apart from Bill and I, that was doing it. And she's oh, now yeah. decided her body needs an egg mm. every other day and feta cheese. And yet when you, when the other day she said to somebody, oh yeah, I'm raw vegan, I'm vegan as well. And she's not even vegan. So, but um, she was the one that was saying, oh yeah, dry fasting. So I don't do that. But I did do a seven day water fast and I was going to work at the same time I was even going we went to a, a, a cinema that has a cafe with it and, and Bill was having something to eat and I was able to sit there and not not eat you know I didn't even want to eat and I was so high I had so much energy it was unbelievable and I could have gone on and on and on for days but I didn't um, I lost about half a stone but I didn't transition back and that's where you do have to transition if you're coming out of the water fast, um, I just went ploughed back into what I normally <laughs> eat. And uh, I put the weight on and it took me ages. I went above where I had been and it took ages to get it off again. So I haven't actually done a water fast since then because it, and if I do one, I wouldn't do more than a couple of days. I don't, I don't and I'm not sure how necessary they are. You know, as long as you are eating the right things, do you really need to do that? Mm yourself because you're not getting the nutrients the day that you do a water fast your body's getting no nutrients at all yeah. I mean how can that be good well I, I certainly think that like I think there's maybe too many people that are doing it like yeah. they don't really like I think that I mean I think this like there's a book I've got a book around here the miracle of fasting and it really is a miracle oh. like if you if you're taking people that are really severe chronic illness oh yeah I do certain, that certain things like and there's been people from the festival that have, that have been arthritis and stuff like that from a young age and they've mm. done water fast and it's helped them a lot so yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of things like that where I think okay people in really severe situations yeah um but there's a lot of people who get into this movement they just start to do it like randomly like yeah, the fast this weekend. I'm gonna fast that, and they're fasting all the time, and it becomes like uh, yeah. too much, like a little bit too much, and yeah. they've not really worked out how to stick to uh, a good diet properly or or a, uh, a better diet. And they, so they're just, as you're saying, like a lot of people will do a 30 day water fast even, and then mm. they'll go home, go back to whatever the diet was that they came from. Yeah that gave yeah. them all the problems so yeah. yes it's, it's funny because I think people think fasting will break their habits and it, it doesn't seem to no 
no i think there's this thing again as well about people trying too much right <laughs> you know if, if you are so desperately you know right yeah this is the best thing so i'm really gonna gonna try and i think it's it's the same with anything that you you know you're trying to get out of a bad habit you're trying to get out of smoking you're trying to get out of drinking if you do it because you think you should um right because you know it's bad for you and it's killing you um you, you're never going to succeed if you do it because you want to the minute i decided right i don't want to smoke anymore it became so easy i mean yeah the withdrawal symptoms were harsh because i smoked a lot i was on 30 a day for a good number of years wow. but the the worse the symptoms got the more determined i became that you know i own my body not not that thing that you liked you know and in a way it got easier because i got crosser and crosser um <laughs> and, and i would never never go obviously um back to smoking but you have to get to that point of actually thinking okay uh, my body's important to me uh, this is what i want to do right not like a, what I'm trying to do. Yeah, you have to make the decision for yourself, not because other people like, like you say, not because other people think it would be good for you or whatever. Yeah. And the other thing I think is that um, I think people give themselves a hard time. I mean, I'll be honest, occasionally I, breaking news, have a bit of cooked food. Mm -hmm. What I've done in the past to give myself a really hard time about it and and think i'll never do that ever again well it's because i now say to myself okay so occasionally you have some cooked food i don't want to do it anymore because i've i've made the decision right. you know that actually i know if i have cooked food i wake up the next morning um i don't feel that great and i think the bags under my eyes that are always there anyway are worse Plus, I'm absolutely furious with myself. So I've got to deal with the mental mm. state of it as well. But I think that's what I mean. It, it, I, you know, I shouldn't give myself a hard time for doing it because it's completely up to me what I do with my own body. Um, and that you were talking on Friday as well as this pledge of allegiance that you were talking <laughs> to with Jim. And, and I think... As, you know, as soon as you introduce something like, I pledge always to only eat raw foods, you know, it's a recipe for disaster because people are going, well, I can't do that. I can't. It's like when you do give up something like food or drink, you say, well, I'm not going to smoke today or I'm not going to drink today. And as soon as you put that thing in, well, I'm never going to eat cooked food again. It's, you're going to eat cooked food, aren't you? I mean, it's... Yeah, well, <clears throat> well I, th I still like the idea of having... I was what do you call it some kind of statement even if it's your, yeah. own, your own personal statement of you know what you aspire to or whatever it is because the, the reason I think is I think people can forget why they're doing it and they can yeah. forget they can maybe stop thinking it's very important and 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 I just thought I mean this is this is from um I can't remember where I came across someone talking about this but they said look at all these religions you know and yeah. they have people coming in once a week and they all go through the same thing again and again and then they're told every day to go home and you know read a bit every day or whatever it is they do so yeah. the, the the whole program is like constantly reminding yourself <laughs> to, to yeah and with, with religions it's like reminding themselves to act according to the religion or or you know be better people and i think i think muslims pray like five times a day or something like that yeah. so they're, they're like constantly um and yet and yet everyone still goes off the path you know when it comes to um with uh with islam or with christianity like no one's perfect no one's following the thing no. but but um if they have but they're probably more, slightly more likely to if they keep on <laughs> if they keep yeah. on reminding themselves of what they should be doing or whatever. But I don't yeah. know, like I, uh, <clears throat> I, 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 I would definitely like to try and crystallize down like what are the core philosophies around healthy lifestyle and and the approach mm. to health and like what are those ideas, um, so that people that that would like to have 
something to look at or whatever. Could even be like a poster mm. or a t-shirt or something. Yeah. It'd be good. But, yeah. Um, well, I mean, that's that's where EFT comes in, in a way. We're yeah. transitioning nicely here because um, I put out an intention for my day every morning. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, and it could be for somebody who really wants, because everybody at the festival, right, you do that week and everybody's having a fantastic time and most people are saying, oh, I'm going to stick to this. This is brilliant. I feel amazing. Yeah. I've got all this energy and you and I know that within five or six months most of those people are eating cooked food again because they're not surrounded by all these people because you know everybody I work with eats cooked food and none of them are vegan yeah but never never even mind five or six months like when they leave no. the site <laughs> almost like immediately well the only time <laughs> I've been to Woodstock and I remember we we stopped off on the bus going back to New York and uh, I think I was with Craig He's been to the UK a right, few times. Right, yeah, Craig, yeah. And we got off the bus and um, people were going, there was a, there's a shop there, isn't there, that you, that you stop yes. off at. And yeah, we yeah. Come, people were coming out with packets of crisps. And he yeah. said, and he, he's really droll, Craig. He doesn't say much, but when he says it, it's so funny. And he said, couldn't they have waited at least two hours, you know? And we <laughs> We've been soaked in all these lectures and all yeah. this fantastic food. And as soon as they got to the first shop, it was crisps. And it's almost like the feeling is, um, I'm going to have this now, but I'm going to go back home and then start doing it or something yeah. like that. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not quite ready, but I will be ready when I get yeah. back and in a few weeks' time. And, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. It's funny but it's how... also the idea that this packet of crisps is a treat. Oh, yeah. And I deserve this because I've just done a week of really healthy food. So this is just a treat. And, you know, I won't do it again. But it... And, of course, it's not a treat, is it? It's, it's um, well, it's poison. I know that sounds a bit dramatic. But, I mean, it isn't food to the body because that's not what we're designed to eat. So as soon as you finish that packet of crisps, it's got to deal with it somehow. But, yeah yeah and it's to me it's also like it breaks the whole the momentum of what you're doing yeah. i think that i think it's, yeah. it's one of these things with that, that i've learned from the diet and from a few other things that i do is like you sort of with the i don't know if you'll agree but with changing your diet it, anyway even a small degree like you learn about yourself quite a lot you learn about your mind you learn about your own level of control over yourself yeah. you you learn almost how you can delude yourself and um maybe yeah. not lie to yourself and you can and you learn how how inaccurate your memory can be like so you might think oh i'll have that packet of crisps and that'll be that'll be great mm -hmm. and then you have it and you're like this wasn't really as good as i thought it was going to be <laughs> you know like yeah you've got yeah. this false idea of what it was exactly yeah um I remember making um, a cooked vegan because I had all these books. I think they were bills actually, and I moved in Bosch cooked vegan books. Bosch, yeah. And I said to mum, "Look, I'll I'll cook you something." Cause I only live around the corner, and I made this thing, and it looked amazing with spinach, and and I, and I thought it smells absolutely delicious. And I thought I'm just going to have a little teaspoon and see what it tastes like, and it was so disappointing. <laughs> well, I mean. I was happy it was it wasn't disappointing because I thought thank goodness for that it actually doesn't taste that great it tasted slimy mm. um and too soft because we're used to crunch aren't we in this diet and it was just no I thought I'm not that was a funny thing I mean I I did I fell off the raw vegan diet after like four or five years of doing it pretty consistently when I first started it and mm. I ended up eating cooked food for about six months before getting back to raw again but the, the thing that was so funny to me was how it felt in my mouth. So I, I, I like yeah. it was so dry and I couldn't believe like I was I would eat like um, I can't remember like uh, um, can't remember some of these some of these dishes that I would eat different things. I can't remember some of the, some of the names I'm trying to come up with. But I could not believe how dry it was. And I was like, how, mm. do, how do people eat this stuff? It's so yeah. dry. Yeah. It was like sticking, it's literally like sticking to the inside of my mouth. And I was like peeling yeah. it. Was like, yeah. It's just, I was so, 
had forgotten how to eat cooked food in a, in a weird yeah. way. And then yeah. when it went into my stomach and it just sat there, it's like, are, yeah. you, are you just going to sit just gonna there do for it. hours and hours and hours? <laughs> and I'd completely yeah. forgot all of that. And then obviously, uh, um, it was uh, it was just so night and day to me, which is it's funny when I see other people say like, they go back to cook food and it's just and they're just the same. And I, I'm like, how could how is their yeah. experience that they were just the same? Like whether whether you choose to go back to that or not, like I, I don't know, I don't know if it would be exactly the same. I don't know if you could ever say that, but uh yeah. No. So it's funny. But let's let's talk about um you gave a talk about your journey. You also talked about EFT and yeah, I believe that you you're helping people with EFT. So act yeah. as if I mean, I pretty much don't know a lot about it. I know what it, what it is, uh, but obviously for the audience and everything. Hmm. Um, because, okay. and, and just to preface this, people come to the UK Fruit Fest and, and they're there to some degree. I think a lot of people there, some people are very specifically there to learn about the raw vegan diet or they're already that, but there's a lot of people who are there more vaguely. Hmm. They're drawn to it for many different reasons of health and, and everything and but what a lot of people end up doing at the event is actually find that it's a place for emotional yeah. growth pers personal growth yeah spir spirituality to some degree um companionship friendship like so people come out of it with sometimes saying that it was they had emotional change yeah. and a, and a um, yeah. and uh, I guess EFT I don't know if it can maybe be connected to that or you can yeah it well it's a that. it's a you know emotional freedom technique so it's about it's about freeing yourself from it's about freeing yourself from negative emotions right and at every every negative emotion you have is just a, a blockage in your energy system um so yeah tapping just takes that away but um but we could do a bit uh a bit on you yeah, sure. <laughs> just so that um so you have to find something that uh you specifically want to work on i mean we can make it general so that people could join in and uh -huh. Uh -huh. and tap along so um if you were feeling any stress about finding somewhere uh, for the festival, for instance, do you feel oh, that? Yeah. Was, uh, yeah. I was, okay. Well, I, 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 I was definitely feeling. Um, well, I'll tell you something, Jane. I, I, I don't know if you've got something with this. I'll, I'll, uh, maybe this won't work, but I've something I sometimes feel is like a lack of motivation. Okay. I don't know, I don't know if that's something that. Yeah. Yeah. Do with, Anything um, is is something. Yeah. Sleep can be an issue for me uh in terms of i mean but when you're talking about emotion i'm thinking about some of the tensions i've got like with other people or with certain things and and things that make me angry or make me resentful i'm trying to think about that but i don't know how public i want to be <laughs> <laughs> we were having we, we were having conversations before this about yes situations yeah. and people and stuff but yeah yeah. Um, and we don't have to be uh, mention people specifically but yeah i guess I, I would definitely say i i do have stress or worry around the event and what's happening this year and will i find the right place and will we be able to put it on as well and will we get as many people i yeah. definitely even this morning or maybe last night i was i always get actually almost every year when i go through a bit of a moment of like can this Is actually happen work? and yeah yeah yeah, even though it's happened for the last, is it six or seven? Is yeah, it, exa exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I still kind of think, how can this, can it really happen, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So for anybody listening, if they're suffering from any stress or worries about anything, um, you could just have a think about what it is, uh, either write it down or just, just think about it. And I'd like you to rate it from zero to 10. So with 10 being the worst and, and eight and zero being perfectly happy about everything. 
um, and just write your number down. But Ronnie, I'd like you to give me your number. So when you think about putting the festival on, um, what's that stress level like? How high is it? I would say that at right this second, it's not too bad, but it has, it'd probably be up at a seven at some times. Okay, all right. Um, and if you think about that stress, where do you feel it in your body? Because we usually hold stress somewhere, it can be in your throat, chest, yeah, stomach. Yeah, I, I feel it like so, solar plexus, I think. Okay. Okay. So the tapping has a, a sequence. Can people see me? Am I visual on this? Yeah. Podcast? yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if you follow where I tap um, and repeat what I say, um, and we'll try and make it um, general. So I might not. Uh, although I think other people might be worrying about where the festival is and if it's if it's going to go on. So people listening to this, it might be relevant anyway. So we start we start with what we call the setup statement, and that's on tapping on the karate chop point on the side of your hand. So if you just start tapping there, even though I have all this stress and worry, and if you repeat that, even though I have all this stress and worry. And sometimes feel I have a lack of motivation. And sometimes feel I have a lack of motivation. I deeply and completely. I deeply and completely. Love and accept myself. Love and accept myself. So even though I feel worried. So even though I feel worried. About whether this festival will happen. About whether this festival will happen. I feel the stress in my solar plexus. I feel the stress in my solar plexus. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And then if you tap the top of your head, just on the crown, I tend to go round and round so you make sure you get the right point. And what we're doing is we're tapping on meridian points. So we're opening up the stress center of the body. Yeah, I can feel it, it's pretty <laughs> All this stress and worry. All this stress and worry. And then we find the eyebrow point in the glasses off. So it's where the eyebrow ends near the nose and just tap on that. Mm -hmm. You can use either hand, you can use both hands. All this stress and worry. All this stress and worry. And then the side of your eyes, if you tap on the side, either side or both. This lack of motivation. This lack of motivation underneath your eyes on the bony bits mm -hmm. it affects my sleep it affects my sleep and then under your nose this stress and worry this stress and worry on your chin is the festival going to happen is the festival going to happen and then your collarbone point is is just below your collarbone yeah mm -hmm. Just there's a, a for yeah. anybody else, it's a, a the U-shaped bit in the middle here. If you just go down into the sides and use yeah. both hands, and you'll definitely get the point. I can feel it in my solar plexus. I can feel it in my solar plexus. All this stress and worry. All this stress and worry. And then there's the under the arm point, which is um, if you go across from your nipple, you will get to the, the right point. I tend to do both sides. Mm -hmm. It's a bit awkward, but it's a really good point to do. You don't want to be missing this one, really. All this stress and worry. All this stress and worry. I feel I have lack of motivation. I feel I have lack of motivation. And then we go back to the top of the head. Let me just do another round. This stress and worry over the festival. This stress and worry over the festival. And then the eyebrow points. It's happened every single year. It's happened every single year. Even with the stress. Even with the stress. Side of the eye. All this stress and worry. All this stress and worry. Under your eyes. I can feel it in my solar plexus. I can feel it in my solar plexus. Under your nose. This stress and worry about the festival. 
the stress and worry about the festival. On your chin. It sometimes affects my sleep. It sometimes affects my sleep. Collarbone. And then I have even more stress. And then I have even more stress. And then the arm, underarms, all this stress and worry. All this stress and worry. And then take a deep breath. And just think about how you're feeling about things now, whether you feel the same as you did before. It's, it's, it's funny because I could really feel it more clearly and I could feel it, as, as soon as we started, I could feel that, that feeling of tension kind of going down. Yeah. Um, Can you still feel it in your solar plexus? I can feel it a little bit, yeah. I can feel, yeah. It, I can feel it a little bit there. And, um, and if you I, had to I've, think about... I, I think I would, I mean, I would like to do that exercise sort of continually. I don't know how often you do it, maybe every day or hmm. something. And, um, well, what we what you would do next <clears throat> is, is do another rating from zero to 10, see if it's dropped. And then we would do another round um, that would say, even though I have this remaining stress and worry, right. and we do the same sequence again, and hopefully it would drop again. And then you would put in, um, even though I've got some remaining stress and worry, I choose. And then you put yeah. the choice in. I choose for everything to be okay. I choose not to have this stress and worry. And then you go through the points that... Um, it happens every single year. It happens. People enjoy themselves. It's a good time. Um, and in the end, hopefully, you would get rid of it completely. Yeah, that that was that was great. I, I, I like mm. that. Yeah. So, how, so you're now doing this well, as I've now nervous qualified. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I did. I had <clears> to do fifty <throat> hours uh, as part of my training, and I had to do it with at least twenty different people. Um, and actually, all my tutors said, we've never known anyone do it so quickly. And how did I know all these people? And I said, well, I've, the fruit festival, you know, we're all we're all <laughs> weird. Um, everybody's up for it. So um, so I had, you know, plenty of people. You, you can do it over 48 months, over two years. Yeah. And I did it in yeah. less than four because I had so many people wanting to do it. So that was brilliant. So now I'm qualified. I've got my own website. Um, but getting back to the actual logistics of EFT is, is it's, a, it's like anything, isn't it? It's the same as, uh, as this remembering why you, you're on this diet. It's the persistence. Yeah. Um, it's the repetition. So I, when I get up in the mornings, I, uh, I don't do the setup unless I've got something, you know, if I was... I mean, things don't we should, worry we should, say, we should also but, say, Jane, that one of the reasons you started doing that was because of oh, yeah. stage, stage fright, isn't yeah. it? Or oh, my God. Performance yes. anxiety. I've forgotten about all that. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, we're going to run out of time. So 16 years ago, um, I met Sean Gray and he was actually teaching my son tennis he was giving him tennis lessons and I was talking with him this morning because we're writing a book together on performance anxiety um, so we keep having these meetings and I said to him I was his first client after he trained so I was his most difficult and also challenging but also the fact that he achieved or we achieved you don't achieve as a practitioner you're just holding the space um, but between us we got rid of my stage fright so Anyway, I would get on stage, every rehearsal would be fine. Um, I'd get on stage and the demons would come. It's the only way I can describe mm. it. Um, and I would just freeze. They talk about this um, fight or flight, but there's also the freeze option. And they showed us a video and I did my EFT training of a tiger being caught by a lion. And no, not a tiger, a deer, sorry, a deer was caught by a lion. 
And we all thought the deer was dead. It was lying on, on the ground. The, the lion had sort of thought about eating it, but this, this deer was apparently dead. It was completely motionless. Mm. I was sort of holding our breaths watching this video. The lion looks a bit bored and walks away, apparently thinking I'll eat it later because it's dead. And after a few seconds, the deer got up and it shook itself like mad and walked off. And it's this bit where you're, you're so terrified, you freeze. And that's what used to um, happen on stage. You would, literally, point, you would literally freeze to that, to that literally degree? I would freeze. And I would have to, I mean, a violin isn't very he heavy. I would have to lift, get my right hand and lift it to put it underneath my chin so that it was there. And then I would be gripping the bow. I mean, it was absolute hell. It really was. And I, you know, you, you turn the music with somebody else because I was always on the outside. So I was on the outside of the stage and you get it into your head that everybody in that um, hall is looking at you. Every yeah. single person is just looking at you because I've, I've frozen solid and I'm, I'm, you know, I've got this long bow and I'm only going, I'm only using two inches of it. Um, and I got arthritis in, in this joint because I was constantly gripping on. And I tried hypnotherapy and I tried um, cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, and that hadn't worked. And I tried, I used to take beta blockers for every concert. Um, I tried drinking a bit before the concert. No, the beta blockers stopped the shakes, but it didn't stop the tension. It didn't right. make right. things any easier. Um, and then I met Sean and he said to me, um, after I'd known him for, I don't know, six months or so, he said, oh, I've just done a course on um, something called EFT and I need clients. Will you be a client? I said, yeah, of course. Uh, and I went along and he said, you know, have you got any issues? And I didn't even think about the stage fright because I thought it's impossible to get rid of. So I said, well, actually, when we have a meeting in orchestra, I'm always too scared to put my hand up and ask a question because I think I'm going to blush and I won't be able to string more than two words together because my heart starts racing. So we did a session on it. The next week we had a meeting in the orchestra and you couldn't shut me up. It was, I was just like a different person. It was incredible. So he said, oh, come back. You know, that's not the end of it. Come back. So I went back and he said, well, that's brilliant. Anything else? And I said, well, there is, but um, there's no point in going there because I've had it for 23 years. It's never going to go. What is it? It's stage fright. And over a, a series, to, I suppose I had about, I was trying to ask him, I can't remember how many sessions I had, but I was, I was very fortunate because he'd become a friend. I used to see him on the tennis court. Um, with my son every Saturday I could ring him up whenever I wanted but anyway I basically got rid of it completely and um, and the thing with EFT is that when you get rid of something it stays got rid of that was 16 years ago and I used to do my little tapping sequence I'd go to the toilet about 10 minutes before we do on stage and I'd sit there saying even though I'm feeling a bit nervous I intend to go out there and enjoy myself and I deep and completely love and accept myself and I'm going to stay in the moment I'm going to focus and trust myself I just do this two minute round and it kept the the demons away they they never came back and I ended up um being not chairperson the assistant chairperson of the orchestra and I remember having to stand up and take meetings because the chairman was away on jury service and something had come up about the Edinburgh Festival and it needed lots of meetings. And I thought, am I the same person? You know, it was, um, and, then, and then it led to doing amateur dramatics and then standing up and giving a talk at, at the festival yeah. was something I would never have been able to do in a million years. Um, and it's all because of tapping. I mean, it's amazing. It is amazing. And when you, you know, it's like acupuncture, you're opening up, it, these are all the meridian points. So the idea is that your, um, your stress center, your amygdala in the brain isn't reacting. The cortisol levels, the stress hormone isn't rising, but you're talking about these things that cause it to rise. So you're putting, people don't like putting the negative in, but you're putting the negative in so your body doesn't react to it. So that next time you're in that situation, you walk out on stage, it doesn't happen because oh. it didn't happen when you were tapping around it. And it, it is really quite 
it's quite miraculous, but it, it, you know, it goes on to affect every area in your life. You find you can do these things that you wouldn't have dreamt of doing. Do you want to mention your website or how people can contact you if you yeah. want some help from um, it? It's EFT for Holistic Balance. Um, but it's very, very new. And at the moment, we're just messing about with it. So it might not, you might not find it for a week or so. But it's, um, it has gone live. But it, it's, so it's EFT for Holistic Balance. I've also got a business page on Facebook, which I'm trying to do things with. Um, and I will get myself properly on Instagram and I'm on Twitter and, and things. But yeah. It's a, I mean, it's, a, it's a great thing to be able to share online as well, I suppose, because you can share these little yeah tasters of it very very and it's very, very yeah. visual and interesting for people to watch as well well i'm offering a 20 minute free consultation for anybody uh who wants it so that at least you get uh to see whether you have a rapport with the with the with a practitioner that's very important um uh just so that it can be you know i can explain what it is we can find out what the person um is worried about what their issue is um and and very often you know people have more than one issue but just as soon as you start we use the analogy of a tabletop with lots of different table legs and as soon as you start knocking one or two down the whole table collapses you know and you find um that uh, well a bit like me with this with the stage fright you know i could then take meetings give speeches go on right. stage and act and you know, um, but I mean, using it to stick to the raw food diet is absolutely perfect for it. You know, um, mm -hmm. even though I know I want to stay raw and I am tempted to, to eat cooked food, I know it's not the best thing for my body and I love. And as soon as you start loving yourself, you're not going to do it anyway, because, you, you know, you want the best for yourself, don't you? Is that is that always part of it? I love and accept myself. Is that a part of the... Oh. Or was that something you've added to it? No, 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 it is a part of it. Right. Some people find it very difficult to say because they don't love and accept themselves. Um, mm. And, you know, I always say to clients, if you're uncomfortable with it, we won't do it. But at some point, um, I will put it on the end bit where I choose to be open to the possibility of being able to love and accept myself. <laughs> you know, because unless you do, my cat's going to join in now. Um, you know, unless you, you love yourself, why would you want the best for yourself? Why would you care what you what you eat or if you drink or if you smoke? Because you don't like yourself very much anyway. Yeah, but as soon yeah. as you reach that position of actually really caring about yourself, then you only want the best. Why wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Awesome. Um, I think that'll be of, of help to a lot of people. Um, but let's let's get back to some other stuff in the interview we've got a few other things to talk about let me you've been to the uk fruit fest a lot i'd like to know what do you think have been why some of your benefits you got from it maybe you can tell us some of your memories um okay yeah, yeah your experiences and things it's i find as soon as i get there and i see your mum elaine um i i I think my emotions are right. It's funny what you're saying about emotions because I suddenly feel so happy. It's a it's a happiness that you know I am happy. I'm a happy person, mm -hmm. but it's it's uh, it's almost sort of euphoric. It's you can like let a let a just a sigh sigh that you're finally you're you're going to be with people even if they're not raw vegan. They're there, they know it's a raw vegan fruit festival and they're there because they're interested, even if they're not on the on that path already, they, they want to start the journey. So it almost feels like you're, you're, it's not a fantasy land, but it's away from, you know, I work with 85 other people and there's only one of them and I'm married to him who's a raw vegan. Mm -hmm. So there are two of us and everybody else, they all drink um most of them there's one other that doesn't drink two others so out of 85 old people there's only four of us that don't drink alcohol um and then there's only two of us who are, are raw vegan so you know i'm not in that world where that's the norm mm -hmm. so when i get to the fruit festival i suddenly felt okay yeah this is my normal this is where i belong it's like my 
fruity tribe. It's my fruity family. And yes, I've heard all these lectures six times now, I think I've been. Um, <laughs> and I still go to them. I still sit there because it's, I, nobody says the same thing there. I mean, no, I'm not saying that, that Doug did, but <laughs> <laughs> careful, Jim. Um, but everybody's got different ways of putting things. And I just like listening. I like listening to it all. So I meet friends who I haven't seen for a year or I've only seen them online. Um, I don't have to do any food prep for a whole week. It's all done mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. um, and just, I like the camaraderie. I, I like the atmosphere. And I, I remember the first year I went and I came, I drove out um, and I, I think I went to Tesco or something to get some fruit. And I thought, ah, oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. It, it just feels like you, you've entered this alien world again. <laughs> and it, it, it's horrible. So it's that, it's like a big comfort blanket. Like somebody's putting a big blanket yeah. around you for the week. And yeah, I don't, I don't need to go to the festival every year. I, I know what I'm doing. Um, you know, I, I've heard it all before, but I absolutely love it. So, you know, what more can I say? Yeah, I, 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 I still go to, I mean, I, I go to Woodstock. There's been a few in Europe that I've went to as well. And uh, I always kind of, the, the thing you're saying, I, I felt getting there like a, a real excitement and an energy and something shifted. I, I remember yeah. a couple of years ago, really, really feeling it at Woodstock, this different level of well being immediately yeah. as soon as I got there and uh, I really see it as like quite a sacred space or a sacred place like in, in, in my life so even the and the, even the place in Denmark that had a festival like I feel the same about that place as well like these were really special places for me and um, I, I, I think that the thing about the festival is we've humans mostly have kind of lost living in communities and living yeah. in supportive environments and mm. and maybe there's some benefits to that on some level but there's a lot of bad things that happen in the world that happen behind closed doors because no one knows what's going on in people's lives anymore you know yeah um but when you're in community like that i think it really clicks is like this is this feels right this feels yeah. good this is exactly we should yeah. be living i mean it's yeah. it, it's hard to make that happen, of course, but probably for our for our best um, health and happiness, we probably should be living around people that we like and know and yeah. that we're around all the time. And yeah. and this, it's just such a contrast to, to modern life. Like if you go back to like, I was yeah. going back to living on my own in a flat or something, and all the other people. <laughs> in that block I didn't really know them and it's just like yeah. such a contrast yeah you know and, but and it's, sort of, it, it's sort of worse though um if you're surrounded like working in an orchestra you mm -hmm. know it's mm -hmm. it's always been deemed as, as one big family um and whilst I have you do have friends in the orchestra obviously it's not the same it's almost like you when you get to a fruit festival you can be yourself right that's it yeah. um and you know you don't have to i mean i felt i know it's ridiculous but i feel i can wear what i want people aren't going to think oh god what's she wearing today some wacky hippie thing <laughs> you can you can walk around without your shoes on and no one's going to think uh anything of it and it's that thing of just that piece of um but certainly the excitement i mean i was excited driving up up you know to chick scream i can feel the excitement um yeah coming and and the other thing is watching people grow you know barbara and um what's her husband's name the the lady with the uh, arrived i, I, I know exactly what you're talking about yeah i mean peter? you know she arrived not barbara being able to, peter? yeah not being able to walk and by the end she was dancing yeah and you know to see people transform like that and she's it, been she's been losing weight ever since she's yeah i know losing weight yeah. And yeah it's fantastic it's, so it's, you know yeah. that element and it's funny because as i said like although there are people that are committed to the raw vegan lifestyle that are there 
there's there's always quite a lot of people that are just complete beginners to investigating mm. any mm. kind of improving their health situation yeah. and, and people get different things out of it i would yeah. love it if everyone left with the intention of changing their diet but for some people it's they yeah. have um they might have a special experience with, with you or with roger or with or at the campfire or mm. they might meet someone that becomes a friend or whatever so yeah yeah different stuff. but i think i mean it makes you know i think if we didn't have these festivals um it would make it very hard really to you know you have to connect with people who want the same as you want and yeah i mean it's great we've got these whatsapp groups but there's nothing like um actually having human connection i mean last year fair play to you i don't know how you managed it because you were the only festival that did but we had a great time because the rest of the world was in fear over COVID. <laughs> I remember getting there and seeing exit entrance on the tents and, and masks and, and yeah. spray. And within about half an hour, I think we'd taken the exit and entrance signs down and the spray had disappeared and, and people were hugging, you know, and just being, being normal. Yeah, yeah, I mean. Oh, thank God, you know, it's. Uh, it was borderline probably not entirely legal in some <laughs> ways, but. <laughs> No. But that was yeah. my, the, the, that would have fallen on me, if anything. But the council knew about it, the venue knew about it. There yeah. was, a, there was, a, there was a, a council guy that asked us to do some stuff. And, and at, but at the end of the day, you can't stop people, as you're saying, hugging or if they no. want to get close to each other. It's their own choice. Yeah. And uh, we did get a little bit of stick from someone because there was, but here, here's the thing, Jane, like, we turned up at that place. Well, I turned up at that place the day before everyone else did. And mm. the campsite was, it felt like it was full of people. And then I went down to the, the restaurant bit and it felt like there was loads of people there. And then on, on the nice days, there was tons of people milling around. Yeah. And I, just, I just thought, because I, I was concerned when I was arriving there thinking the locals are going to report us. Yeah. yeah. And then when I got there, I was like, we're like, we're just going to be a small part of this because there's so yeah. many other people here. It yeah. was it was almost like there wasn't any restrictions, but there, yeah, um, there just wasn't an issue. Yes, I mean that was it. So that was even more special than than the other years, I suppose. So, so yes. you know, the, this fear was gone. But yeah, I think um, without them, you know, I mean, it always seems a long time from you know the the beginning of August until the next. July when the next festival is um well, that's always been the idea like like say last if last year had been different and everything had went better and for a start it would have been the biggest year you know so it yeah. would have been totally different if if COVID hadn't happened because we had so many cancellations mm -hmm. but yeah. uh that would have probably also allowed us to push on and and do other things like have have multiple things throughout the year, whether that was just weekends or um, one day events, or you know, there's a bunch mm -hmm. of other things just for a follow up for people, so that they can yeah. keep on uh, reconnecting back with the whole with the, the whole idea. And um, and I think I think that would still be great to to offer, be able yeah. to offer more, and even. Because I think with the fruit festivals, like it, it offers so much, and in a sense, you could dedicate you could dedicate a whole weekend to just one one part of it, whether that was uh, yeah. the the learning the recipes and things, or a weekend. Yeah. Was, I've always, I mean, I've, I've pictured that. I mean, I, I don't see. I think a lot of people would love it if we put on a a weekend or a week, and it was. We could have someone being the chef. You could do some emotional freedom stuff and teach about that. And do some and recipes. Then, <laughs> and maybe Ro yeah, maybe Roger could come. Yeah. And do some and have different people doing different yeah. things. And and I think there's a huge. Well, I know there's a huge audience of people who would love yeah. that. So I'm kind well, of waiting. I'm waiting for restrictions to disappear so that yeah. these things are easier to do. But I haven't told you about our dream yet, which is yeah, the dream. It's a dream that will happen. It's not just a dream, but uh -huh. um, it came to us during lockdown when the weather was fantastic, wasn't it, last year? And we sat in the garden and 
that on either side of us have got children and it was quite noisy out there and I Bill and I said oh we didn't realize that we don't actually want neighbors so our plan <laughs> once my parents have um, gone to wherever you go in the big sky um, we will move to probably um, mid North Wales to a much bigger property um, and this is why I wanted to do the EFT and the yoga so I'm going to be hopefully qualified as a yoga teacher by May um, so that we will have vegan raw vegan retreats and we're looking at very small numbers probably 10 or 12 people um, but we can do that every month Excellent. so yeah. you know you don't have so even if there are 70 people that want to come um, they can have a turn you know there will be space so anyway that's our plan so I wanted to be able to offer the yoga EFT for anybody who wants it I'm going to do food prep demos so that people are actually preparing what they're going to eat that night um, it'll be in lovely countryside so there'll be walks um, we'll have our own gym so Bill can do gym work weights with people so this is our plan and, um, mm, and it won't I don't know when it will happen because I don't have a crystal ball but uh, it will happen eventually so. fantastic Jane well that's probably a good place to end the yeah the with that and um, just maybe for a last thing what would, what would be some of your advice for people that are beginning down this journey and maybe they're having some struggles with it um, I'd say don't try too hard. Um, actually, do some tapping in the morning and have an intention to maybe only eat raw food that day. Um, and don't restrict. I, th I think I mentioned this at the festival because people had said to me, this is fine for a week, but I couldn't eat like this the whole time. And I said, I don't eat like this the whole time. Um, I eat like this for breakfast and lunch, and then I make something for dinner that's very often within the 80, 10, 10 perimeters, but it's fancier. It's got sauces, it's got mm -hmm. dressings, because it's all in the dressing. I mean, that's another tip is buy, I've got Melissa's book on dips, dressings and sauces, um, and, yeah. it, and it, it really kept us going in, in the winter because the winter can be challenging. Although my argument when people say, oh, don't you want some hot food, is that by the time you've chewed your food up in the mouth, in your mouth, it's exactly the same temperature, whether it's raw or cooked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the only advantage to not eating, well, there are lots of advantages, but you're not going to burn your mouth if you don't eat cooked food. And I was always burning my mouth. So, <laughs> um, so I'd say, you know, get yourself some cookery books some non-cookery books uh, and really have a you know try things see what you like don't yeah. restrict yourself because you will fall off if you just say okay i'm only going to eat fruit uh, unless you know I, I occasionally do that for a week i'll say okay i'm only going to eat fruit but if you try if you think that that's what the diet is i should say nine times out of ten people are going to fail but if you can be a bit more elaborate um find nice recipes do it because you want to do it because you care about yourself do your tapping um and go to the festivals <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much jane so okay it's what, been a pleasure what what's your website again for those who want to find out um, it's eft for holistic balance.com Thank you very much, everyone, for listening and watching to this episode of the uh, Love Fruit Podcast. I've forgotten the name there. <laughs> With Jane Sinclair. And I highly encourage you to go and check out what she's doing and how she can help you. It's Jane's and been someone that I've known for uh, probably seven years now or something. So, we, yeah, uh, yeah I, I definitely recommend her to you. And... Um, if you want to learn more about the UK Fruit Fest, you can go to fruitfest.co.uk and uh, we'd appreciate if you want to send this podcast to other people, it might help. And if you've got any feedback, send an email to info at fruitfest.co.uk. Jane, any last words there? Um, I just wanted to say, uh, if my website doesn't come up this week, 
just be patient because it will be up probably in by next week anyway. And you're on Facebook and you're on the UK Fruit Fest forum. Yes, uh, yeah. UK Fruit What's Fest community. Yeah. yeah. So people. I think people most people know me now. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for watching and listening, everyone. And we'll see you in the next episode of the Love Fruit Podcast.